Shalom is Brother Yasha Mazakar from the Israelite Report. IsraeliteReport.com upon my watch. All praises are definitely due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessings to all the brothers spread across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth and sincerity. I want to get this in um, Revelation 12 and 12. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time this is the time that we're in the short time Ephesians 6 and 12 says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And this is what we're dealing with right now. Okay, spiritual wickedness in high places. And our, every brother is going through something. <clears throat> every brother is going through something. Every brother has a test. Everybody, Every brother has something they're dealing with. And every test is different. Okay, and unique. All right. And what it's doing is it's preparing us, shaping us for the time of Jacob's trouble and the hour of Jacob's trouble and, and the um, hour of temptation. Because when that time comes, when they give the go ahead, the, the, um, you know, they give the green light on the mark of the beast, that RFID microchip. It's a wrap. It's no more teaching. It's no more standing, you know, out there and, and trying to, you know, get people to take heed to the word. At that point, that's a, that's it. That's a, it's a wrap. You either got it or you don't have it. Okay, now I have a couple of couple of uh, news articles I want to get into. <clears throat> I'm going to start with this one. Um, this came from uh, Twitter. They showed a, a um, video. Police beat Africans in Spain. Police beat Africans. In Spain, one man down in a chokehold was being hit with a nightstick. Another man just standing there was assaulted. And I saw the video and these two African men were attacked. I don't know what the first guy was doing, what the reasoning for it was, but he was laying there handcuffed and these police officers was beating his ass. Police officer just went over there and beat his ass while he was already handcuffed. So I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know the backstory. <clears throat> but the other guy was kind of like complaining, like, "Hey, hey, what are y'all doing?" <laughs> and the cop went over to him and assaulted him too. He wasn't arrested. He wasn't being arrested. He wasn't uh, investigated for anything. He just was standing there, and these cops went over there and got his ass for complaining about what was happening to the other African man. Okay, and that's the spirit on these Edomites right now. They don't give a shit about you and your so-called rights. And I see Jake all the time talking about human rights, civil rights, and I don't know what it's going to take for you to realize that, that in this kingdom you have no rights. They still see you as three-fifths of a man. Here in America, that's what they see you as. And them Europeans are getting tired of you niggas, man. <laughs> Whether you know it, recognize it or not, they're sick of you. That's why they're protesting the, the, the migrants coming over. Okay. This comment came from... Um, 
this guy on Twitter, on X. His name is Chris Cameru. Chris Cameru. He says, go back to Africa. You are not welcome there. It's not your culture, your people, your land. Why are you there in the first place? And this came from an Edomite. This was an Edomite telling these these Africans to go back to Africa. And uh, this is the spirit. This is the mindset of these Edomites. And this is what I keep trying to tell you that, you know, you, you, a lot of you Jake sit here and let these propagandists tell you that we're all going to get along. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be smoothed over and we're all going to become one people. And that's a goddamn lie. There is no new world order. There is no one world order. There is no out of many one because that's what the new world order claims is out of many. There will be one. That's bullshit. That's never going to happen. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. I hope I said that right, but that's how the, you know, that's the scripture. That's the scriptures. Hand join, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. The Lord isn't going to, uh, all of a sudden exonerate Esau or, or um, give Esau his um, bailout money. <laughs> Say you can go home after all the wickedness he's done. No, he's going to serve and he's going to he's going to pay for his crimes. You did, but Esau loves this statement. You did the crime. You got to do the time. That and that what Esau tell our people. Pull yourselves up by your bootstraps. Right? Go back where you came from. Isn't that what they tell us? So I don't understand these niggas, these little Israelite niggas. Because you got niggas, you got Israelite groups that are now saying Esau can be saved. And one, and I don't give a shit. Y'all can see my channel. I don't give a damn. Y'all can get mad if y'all want to. I know who you are. You know who I am. Right? I know you're secretly watching. You got a, a particular camp that's saying, if you don't forgive Esau, you can't be saved. There's nowhere in the scriptures where it says the Lord is going to forgive Esau or save Esau for that matter. So how the hell did you get that? These Edomites hate you. I got another story um, to, to go into, but let me, let me continue with these. Uh, let me continue here. Uh, someone replied, um, to this guy. Let me read the first comment over from Chris Cameroon, or Edomite on Twitter. This is what he said. Go back to Africa. You're not welcome there. It's not your culture, your people, your land. Why are you there in the first place? And this is an Edomite. I believe he's in America but he's responding to these Africans over in Spain and saying, it's not your culture. It's not your land. Why are you there in the first place? And someone replied with this. Uh, it was a Jake, a black man. He replied, same thing Africans said when they were colonized. Guess what? Your ancestors did. You have no right to send them out. Enjoy every one of them there. So this is a Jake replying to this crackety cracker ass Edomite who who told him, excuse me, told those uh, those men over there in Spain, those African men over there in Spain. He said it's the same thing Africans said when they were colonized. See, this is the thing about Esau. Esau doesn't find himself guilty for nothing. They hold themselves not guilty. They're not remorseful. They don't see like they did anything wrong. They call it manifest destiny. They came over to America. They raped, robbed, looted, stole everything from the, from the Native Americans. They don't feel no shame. No remorse at all. They laugh and make movies about it. They mock. Your suffering is, is, is their... Uh, you know, is their joy. 
Your suffering, the black man's suffering, is the white man's joy. But you niggas, instead of seeing it that way, you go, what was she it? What she it? We all one people. No, we're not all one people. The Lord divided the nations. All right, and gave them different inheritance. Inheritances, excuse me. Right? This is what another person replied to this asshole, Chris Cameroon. Another person wrote this. It says, uh, Europe destabilizes and loots Africa, giving millions no other option but to look for opportunities elsewhere. And see, this is what this devil, Chris Cameroon, who was talking shit about these Africans being over there in Spain. This is what he fails to, to, to look at. He overlooks this. I'm going to read it again. This, this other black person. Black black man on Twitter wrote this. Europe destabilizes. And that's something that Esau is good at. Destabilizing. Destroying. That's what he does. A thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay? Europe destabilizes and loots Africa, giving millions no other option but to look for opportunities elsewhere. And then when our people go looking for opportunities elsewhere... The Edomites might say, well, nigga, what's wrong with you? Why can't you get your shit together? We doing good over here. Well, no shit. You done stole everything from over here. <laughs> you stole everything. So, of course, you living good. And by the spirit and the power of Yahweh by Shimei Hawashah, the Lord is going to destroy these goddamn people. And make them pay. Give unto them double. Right? There's going to be a double recompense. Payback. Recompense meaning payback for what they've done to us and what they've stolen from us. I'm going to go back. It says here um, in this reply. Europe destabilizes and loose Africa, giving millions no other option but to look for opportunities elsewhere. And it says here, I can't wait until Africa gets this act together and leaves Europe in the second dark ages. And another person wrote, likewise, go back to your lands stolen from the native Indians. Right, because they pretend like they didn't steal it. Again, they hold themselves not guilty. They find themselves not guilty. They don't see no guilt in what they've done. Anything you do, you're found guilty. If you sneeze the wrong way, you're a nigga that should be thrown in jail. But the cracker? No, no, no. The cracker can come shit in your house, right in your living room. And he'll say, it's not my mess to clean up. That's your mess. This is your house, nigga. You clean it up. Because that's how he look at you. A servant. And I'm just pissed off at these niggas that don't see that. And they've become just that. They've become servants. Homeborn slaves. It's not it's not Israel become a servant. It, it, it's, 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 it's he not a homeborn slave. That's what our people have become. And Shalom is Brother Yasha Mazakar from the Israelite Report. IsraeliteReport.com upon my watch. All praises are definitely due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Peace and blessings to all the brothers spread across the four corners of the earth. Pushing the truth and sincerity. Those that truly believe and are sighing and crying and wanting to get the hell up out of here. I uh, got this from from uh, X, Twitter, Twitter X. Um, from the shadows of Ezra, this this guy is one of those uh, truthers. But um, he posted this: the Rothschilds family is distracted, is drastically pulling back in North America, and um, a lot of these Edomites have been following the the um, elites, the Rothschilds family around and seeing what they're doing and seeing what they're uh, investing in, what they're pulling back from. 
and they're kind of like, you know, they're on their watch, right? So to speak, because these, these people believe that they can help protect and save America. That's why Trump leads in, uh, leans into that, you know, save America, make America great again. So he posted the Rothschilds family is drastically pulling back in North America with plans to close its Chicago office. And it says, this move follows a troubling drop in deal volume, leading to the sudden shutdown of their Miami office barely a year after its, after its grand opening. Now the Rothschilds will be left with just three U.S. outposts in New York, Los Angeles, and Boston, raising questions about the future of their American operations. And I went and checked, and, and I kind of went through the comment section to see what these Edomites are talking about, because that's what I do. You know, I'm always spying on these Edomites to see what they're talking about. Not just the, the podcasters or the, or the social media influencers. I'm looking to see what these regular, everyday Joe Sixpack, uh, Budweiser, or Miller Lite, or whatever it is they're drinking, Coors Light, <laughs> Edomites are talking about. Because that gives me a clue as, as to, you know, where they're moving to and then their next move is. So um, there's this idea that the elites are um, getting ready to pull out of America because America is supposed to collapse according to, um, damn, what's this guy? Uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski, the father of, um, Mika Brzezinski. Mika Brzezinski is on uh, MSNBC's Morning Joe show. She's a, she's a Democrat. So anyways, um, Zbigniew Brzezinski said America would be the world's first and last superpower and that it would collapse into a new world order. In other words, America was built up so it could collapse and create a new world order. Because the the rest of the world depends on America. That's why it became a real big superpower. Okay. So I went to go see what these regular everyday Edomites were saying. A lot of them were pushing this nonsense saying that um, the Rothschilds are backing out because, you know, they believe that, uh, you know, the military is on to them and that the military is going to bring them down. Which that's complete nonsense. That's a goddamn lie. Uh, the military is controlled by the Rothschilds. But some of them see the light. Some of them actually see what's really going on. And so I'm going to get to these comments. <clears throat> Again, let me, matter of fact, let me go back and help you understand what's going on. The Rothschilds family is drastically pulling back in North America. They're, they're, separating themselves from North America, from the United States of America. Okay. And so this is a sign that something is coming for them to not invest in America anymore. That means something's about to happen. They did the same thing right before the pandemic. So um, I'm going to get to some of the replies. This one person says, what does the deep state, that means the new world order, you know, that's another term or word, terminology for the uh, new world order, the deep state. What does the deep state have in store for North America and Europe? The Rothschilds own the U.S. and Israel. Now, see, this person knows a little something. Right? Respectfully, they know a little something. Don't know the truth, but he know a little something. He says, what does the deep state have in store for North America and Europe? The Rothschilds own the U.S. and Israel. What we do know is that they are purpose, purposefully collapsing these nations. But why? 
many theories but no facts. Yet they're collapsing these nations on purpose. <laughs> they're collapsing these nations on purpose so they can bring about a new world order where you have a United Nations that rules. And trying to tell our people that this is coming, that troublesome times are coming, and that you're going to have UN, United Nations troops in the U.S., you know, they think you're crazy. But these times are coming. And this, this person knows a little something because they were smart enough to realize that they're only backing out of the U.S. or uh, pulling their investments out of the U.S., the Rothschilds family, that is. They're pulling their investments out of the U.S. because they plan on collapsing and destroying it economically. Okay, so this person gets it. Um, another person writes, we better prepare for what's coming. This is a big tale. It's going to take all of us. Now, they're right on the, on the part of you better prepare for what's coming. They're wrong on the it's going to take all of us. No, you're not going to stop what's coming because the, the New World Order has uh, these humanoids, these robots. Robotic police forces, they don't need you anymore. And they have the United Nations and they have the uh, so-called illegal immigrants that are coming over that aren't going to show no mercy. I, again, I said so-called because, you know, we know Esau doesn't belong here. This is not his land. So, but this idea of it's going to take all of us, that's complete BS. No, you're not going to unite everyone and fight against the new world order. Yeah, you're going to have a handful of people that, that will do that, but they're going to fall. They're going to fail. The Lord's will is going to be done. Prophecy is going to be fulfilled. His word does not go out void. Another person wrote this. Yes, read between the lines. They're preparing for something possibly catastrophic. Again, let me read this again. This person writes, yes, read between the lines. And he's right. You do need to read between the lines. He says they're preparing for something possibly catastrophic, very eerie, and 9-11-ish. Again, this person right here knows something. And there were plenty of comments that talked about how this is great. The Rothschilds are leaving the country. They need to get the hell up out of our country. These are these Edomites that are thinking this way. But what they fail to understand is that they're not backing out and and um, leaving the country or uh, pulling their investments away from America because America's going, doing great. No, they're doing it because they know that there's, there's a collapse coming, specifically, specifically economic. Okay, hard times are coming. Uh, some Someone else wrote, they're getting out so they can watch the U.S. burn from afar. Again, I'm going to read this comment again. This is heavy. Someone writes, they're getting out, meaning the Rothschilds are getting out so they can watch the U.S. burn from afar. And see, this person knows a little something, something. This person here knows what's up. They know that they're pulling out to destroy it. Okay, and that's what's coming. The fall of this goddamn country, this wicked kingdom. Now, he may not have meant burn, literally. That he's, you know, they're pulling out to watch the U.S. burn, literally. But that's what's literally going to happen. This place is going to be hit with thermal nuclear Missiles, hypersonic missiles from Russia. Yeah, it's coming. Iran, oh, it's coming. It's coming. But the thing is, the men of the Lord have been saying this for quite some time now. And we've been given the deaf ear. We've been told we're stupid, crazy. Don't know what we're talking about. Oh, nigga, you negative. You know, you got these stupid-ass niggas that say, oh, you're negative. Negative how? 
And I'm going to tell you something. I, I told y'all a lot of these people were, you know, scared or shook up during the pandemic. And I, I predicted this would happen. Um, and then after the pandemic, things kind of settled down. It doesn't seem like nothing happening. So now they, will, they you know, they back to being proud again. You know, because I've I seen it. I've seen it, man. A lot of people were, you know, we got to lean on the most high. And I hope God is with me. You know, even though they didn't call themselves Israelites, they, you know, they, they you know, this is, this is going against God. And we got to lean more into God. Right? And now the things, you know, we're here we are four years later. They forgot how their country was shut down. How their businesses were shut down. They forgot curfews. They forgot just that fast. They forgot. Now they're back to talking shit. They're back to mocking. They're back to scoffing. They're back to telling us we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Okay, my man. You got it. You got it all figured out. But you don't know what's coming is going to be worse than what you've seen before. The Most High Power is not mocked. And his word is going to come true. If he spoke it, he meant it. And it's going to come to pass. So, let's do this. Let's get... um. Jeremiah 28 and 8, because these Edomites aren't doing nothing but saying, but the men of the Lord have been telling you already that these things are coming, but you don't believe us. It says the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. Prophesied against many countries. Many wicked kingdoms and establishments. Even our own people, when they go off, and are wicked as hell. The prophets have been before me and before thee of old prophesies, both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophet which prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord have truly sent him. And that's when you're going to figure it out. When this stuff happens, when, when, when all hell breaks loose. When your ass is on the chopping block. When you got to make that decision. When that hour of, the, of, hour of temptation comes. When you sitting there going, man, I either got to take this microchip or Man, I might, I might not, you know, have a place to stay. I may not have any food to eat. What am I going to do? You did the same thing with the shot during the pandemic. Y'all know they did it. They were telling you you couldn't keep your job unless you took that shot. Lions say they didn't. I had somebody tell me. They don't remember that. This was a few, this was maybe a month or two ago. Had this conversation with somebody at work. And I reminded them, like, you don't remember when they mandated the shot? And they were like, oh, I don't remember them mandating it. I said, damn. These people are glitching out in the matrix. And a lot of you don't understand and don't realize, getting back to that post from this guy, he has the nerve to be called the shadow of Ezra. He's a goddamn Edomite. Um, but anyways, um, getting back to that post talking about how they're pulling out of America and they're pulling their offices back. That's a clear cut sign that this place is about to collapse and be destroyed because the elites are always in the know. In the know. Or if you went back to the pandemic, all of these low level Edomites or elite Edomites, such as your Trumps and your Nancy Pelosi's and people like that, they were making different uh, changes in investments and 
you know, the market and everything because they knew something was coming. They're insiders. So if the Rothschilds are no longer investing in America like that, they're pulling their offices back in America, what does that tell you? See, if you're a thinking man, you can catch on. But if you're just a dumb dumb, you'll say, what's she? What's she? It don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing to me. Well, how does that affect me? Right? Because that's how a nigga think. How, 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 how did it affect me? What that got to do with what I'm doing? Got everything to do with it. Because you're still in slavery. You're still in captivity. And if you see your master, because look, right now the Edomite is your master. Whether you want to admit it or not, you can lie and say, well, I'm free. Free to do what, nigga? If your master is pulling out of something, you better be looking at it <laughs> and paying attention. Okay? Second Ezra 16 and 70. This is, you know, brothers go through this all the time, but I'll get it. Second Ezra uh, 16, and I'll start at 70. It says, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Oh, man, those that fear the Lord, man, we're going to be, oh, we're going to be persecuted. Oh, you thought it was bad in 2020. What's coming next? The way they're going to look at you, oh, they're already setting it up to blame us for everything that ever happened that was negative. That's why you got your Bishop Nathaniels over there in IUIC lying, talking about the, the mark of the beast. It's not the microchip. OK, and we don't know what they, the elites told him to do. OK, and he's going to start doing some weird shit. Give him a little bit of time. He's going to start doing some weird stuff. Because he's taking orders from the elites, from the Rosicrucians who he sold out to a long time ago. All right. You're going to start seeing this. So again, second Ezra seventy uh second Ezra sixteen seventy, for there shall be in every place and in in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord, they shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Because we're going to go through some real suffering, persecution, lies, slander, false imprisonment. Falsely accused and in, and imprisoned, it's gonna happen. This is where you count the cost of being in in this truth. No, America is not gonna be made great again. No, you're not going back to normal, even if it's a slight resemblance of what's normal. This devil is coming down with great wrath. He hate you. The same way we hate wickedness, he hates you. He hates righteousness. And if you're a man of the Lord and you're standing on the word of the Lord, he hate you. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Nobody said that, right? The Lord set certain men up to receive his word, teach his word, and to give it to you. Now, if you can't get it, the Lord didn't want you to get it. It's that simple. But if you're a man of the Lord and you really stand on this, you really believe on this, believe you me. Second Ezra uh, 16 and 71, 
they shall be they shall be like madmen sparing none but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the lord for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses right if you don't take that microchip you can't live here you can't rent this apartment No, you don't get no transportation. No, you can't buy from this grocery store. That's what you're going to be seeing as America burns. But And I don't mean that in the physical uh, because America's, by the time America's uh, literally at war, World War III, that is, you know, hopefully we, you know, we're on the chariots up out of here. I'm talking about economically. And as far as, you know, the insurrections and the, um, you know, the civil wars. Okay. Because these things are coming. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. 73rd verse. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. (laughs) <laughs> and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Okay. Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh, our power, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, is your God. Is, excuse me, your guide. Okay. So, again, <laughs> the Lord has set up certain men to make it through these troubling times that are coming. And you have all of this talk about who's who and who's got the right doctrine and who's telling what and da da da. You're going to find that out very soon. Who was telling you the truth and who was lying. That's what you're about to find out. Because I can promise you. Unless uh, Bishop Nate, Nathaniel, repents. Which, you know, me personally, speaking as a man, I can't see it. He's going to encourage his people to take the microchip because he loves his position too much to say otherwise. And he's sold out and, and, and given up too much of himself to say otherwise. And as far as this New World Order is concerned, this was something that the uh, ancient men have tried to establish they've they've tried to they've you know you've had these um these ancient kingdoms that have tried to rule and conquer the world all right and bring them under subjection to this new world order there's nothing new under the sun it's just the difference is that this edomite kingdom the the reincarnated uh, Rome, Roman Empire has better technology than before. So they're really uh, feeling themselves, you know, for lack of better words. They really think that they got it like that. And they feel like this is their time, their chance their, or their time to challenge the Most High. And you need to understand this. There's, there's a demon on these devils, if you will, that they really believe they can take out the Most High. That's why they speak great words of blasphemy. Isaiah 46 and 9, Remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh, and there is none else. I am Yahweh, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And what did they do since the days of old? What did they do? 
try to bring everyone under one umbrella. They did it with the, the Greek, the Grecian Empire, the Roman Empire, the Babylonians. All right, try to try to make the people one and come under one uh, supreme uh, ruler. They've always attempted this. This time they have better technology. And they can track and trace you everywhere you go. Because your life is on that cell phone that you use. They can ping you everywhere you go. Remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh and there is none else. I am Yahweh and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times the things that are not yet done. Now, that's why people get caught up. Again, when are these things going to happen? Every vision faileth, right? When are these things you talking about going to happen? Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure because this is the most high's will. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. The word of the Lord does not go out void. Okay, so yeah, these Edomites are, are pretty much... Those Edomites that I read were pretty much on point. This place is going to burn. Economically, morally, it's already burning. And physically, it's going to burn. Now, if you don't believe that, then get the hell up off my goddamn channel. And go listen to your favorite pussified, bitch-made-ass Israelite group. And listen to them tell you that all the nations can be saved. That Edomites can be saved too. You want to believe that? That's on you. Fuck you. You want to go push Christianity? F, F you. Um, you know, I drop one F-bomb. Playtime is over. 